All right, so I thought I'd give an update on the Kaiju engine, kind of where we are so far. I'll start off with the newest stuff. Uh, here we have the 3D viewport with the trackball uh, or turntable camera. Uh, so you can orbit, you can pan around, and you can zoom in and out. Um, so let's take a look at the log window. So we have a log window now, which will show you the different kinds of errors. And you can clear them out. Or, or logs. I have a test here for, uh, I'll do a sample info, sample warn, sample error. And so you'll see here in the info, this is some info. If you click on it, it'll take you to the selected. Uh, this text should be a little bolder. I'll probably have to fix that. But uh, you'll see that it prints out the time, the message, and then any um, of the key value pairs that are part of S log, because this is using the structured log system in um, Go. Now warnings and errors, they have a they have a stack trace associated with them. So when you select one, it'll show you the trace up to that error. Uh, info does not, it's just whatever it is. So I can add the trace in there. I don't think it hurts because we have all this extra space whenever we isolate a log. Uh, but yeah. You can clear them out, all that sort of stuff. Um, we also have this nice menu. Uh, if you haven't seen it, this menu is just a simple HTML and CSS uh, setup for having this bar at the top with some text. And then when you hover over these guys, it um, changes the vis visibility of these uh, child panels here. The file menu doesn't work. This is just a sample I was playing around with. Uh, we have a long, long window, we have uh, the about window started, and then when you click repository, it just takes you to the GitHub repository. And then I added this test um, section just so that I can add these sample uh, info warnings and errors. And any engine errors, say in the um, engine code itself, or any of those logs will also show up in the log. So, um, it helps with debugging at runtime, uh, but you can also, of course, when you're debugging the engine, see those directly inside of here as you'd expect. So some of the other things that we have, um, I'm just going to relaunch here because it's the only way to do it right now or to get to that project window right now. So we have the project window that comes up when you start. Down here at the bottom will be a list of projects that you've previously opened. So you can go to say select folder, and then this is a, if you haven't seen it yet, this is um, a file browser that uh, that I built just for Kaiju. So it helps with um, selecting files across platforms so we don't have to use uh, the platform specific Windows select or you know whatever it is gonna be on Linux and whatever it is on Mac. We just have one select here that we can operate with. And I'm gonna probably extend this to have, you know, recents over on the left or whatever. But right now it's just a simple browse through the files and you can actually browse. So I can say, go into the content folder, the textures and the icons. You'll see this updates up here. But let's go to this test project, which is a blank folder I just made. I'm going to select that as the project, and you'll see it stuck a monkey in here just because I'm testing stuff. Uh, this is a this is a mesh from the uh, from Blender. I just exported it. I did some vertex colors. That's why it's terribly colored. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a sample of a very basic shader, no lighting. Uh, I haven't dealt with all the. I haven't put in all the other shaders from my previous engines I worked on yet or haven't written any new ones, just trying to get all the editor um, set up. The resizing and everything works for the editor. Um, so no more Vulcan errors when you're uh, messing around in here and changing the window sizes, which is, which is uh, low hanging fruit plus, I suppose. So I wanted to show you what this folder structure looks like here. Um, whoops, I'm gonna just move the this out of the way. So the folder structure 
if I go into the test project, you'll notice has a few things in here. It has the VS Code, so you can actually open up this test project in VS Code and, and be able to run it um, straight from Visual Studio Code as a game. Uh, of course, we don't have any map editing or anything set up yet. Um, that's coming next. We have uh, the content folder, which is a copy of what's needed by the, the engine for it to run. Um, so one of the things, I mean, these monkeys aren't needed, of course. They could be needed, but the, it basically just copies whatever is currently in the engine content folder. So um, these monkeys will be gone, you know, on a release build. It's just here for me testing. But one of the things you'll notice is that um, this monkey OBJ file has a monkey OBJ ADI, and this is a uh, just a simple, um, it's kind of like, if you used other engines and they put files next to the, the content file, um, it's it's information about that file. So this is the asset database index or the asset database info for monkey.obj. So you'd, you'd move both of these at the same time, essentially when you're moving it around, or you just delete this and move this guy. Um, but that would probably break a lot of the, the things that are linked together inside of the engine. So really you don't want to delete this. You want to move them together um, and you, We'll have some moving functionality uh, set up. So if you take a look at this ADI, you'll notice that there's an ID. This is a UUID. Um, and UUIDs are generated using uh, Google's UUID uh, generator. I'm just importing a forked version of that package. And uh, eventually we can get around to just reading the UUID spec and implementing a simpler, straightforward version ourselves. Uh, but it has a path to the file that's useful for reverse lookups. It has the type of object it is, and then it has no parents. For example, this OBJ has no parents, but it does have children. So inside of OBJ files, you can have multiple meshes. Inside of GLTF files, you can have multiple objects and meshes and lights and all kinds of stuff. So we want to be able to import all those things as separate assets. Um, individually, so you can use them individually. So you 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 op you import an OBJ file, but you want to use one of the meshes inside of the OBJ separately from the OBJ, and you don't want to use them all together. So uh, all of those meshes are imported separately. So for example, there's only one mesh inside of this OBJ file, and this is what this child is. And you'll notice this child has a parent ID, which matches this ID. So Essentially, all those children are packed in there into this one ADI. So if we came over here and we took a look at um, test project cache, this is the project cache. Um, there's an editor cache inside of the user folder of your system. Um, but you'll see meshes are here. And uh, there's a few here uh, because there are three meshes that were found. Uh, it looks like I might have a bug where the ADIs aren't. Oh, they are here. I wasn't paying attention. So here's a couple more ADIs. There just isn't a, a GLTF, or there isn't a GLTF or GLB ADI generator yet. Um, it's just an interface you implement to say that this this importer, this is the importer for this file type. I haven't put those in yet. I was just doing OBJ. So there's those three ADIs there. And if you go to cache messages, that will match up match up to these three guys. So you'll notice that um, these are not ADI files. These are .msh files. And that's because this is the pure mesh data, the vertices, the indices. Um, yeah, that's, and basically, I think that's the majority of it. And this is the vertex that you see inside of the engine. So it's not just a three-dimensional point, but it's also vertex color, normals, tangents, all that sort of stuff. So this is the um, extracted data from, uh, say, the OBJ files that were imported. So we have those so they can just be, we don't have to read OBJs and GLTF and other mesh files, model files. In real time, we can just streamline, pump these straight to the GPU, essentially. And then we have an index, and this is just the indexing of all of the ADIs. This is for reverse lookup. So let's imagine that um, this monkey had a hat, and the hat was a child to the monkey. 
so the monkey has its ID and then the hat has its ID. And we'll say this is ID A and this one's ID B. So B, uh, let's say A would reference B because A has a child B, which is the hat. Well, it would it would be stored as hat, it wouldn't, or it would be stored as B, not hat. It wouldn't be the path to the hat or anything like that. It would be that ID, that UUID that we saw, kind of like this. This would be our B, for example. So we need a way of looking up what asset that is. So let's say if it was a texture or a material or whatever. So um, I don't know why I closed the uh, notepad here. So these IDs are just reverse lookups to those files. So there's here's like the monkey obj. Um, here's the checkbox png. So that's all these things are doing is they're just an index with a file name that matches the ID and then it points to an actual file. Now we can go and use something like SQLite or whatever to, to make these lookups a little faster. Um, but these are not going to be runtime for the game. They are runtime uh, for the editor. When the game gets compiled, um, all this stuff is moot and everything just is going to be packed into one you know, content file with an offset to the asset information. And um, that is just going to be streamlined straight into the game so that there isn't any of this um, reverse lookups and going back and forth and all that. We want asset loading to pump straight to the GPU as fast as possible. Um, so this is just for editor and editor's sake. So if I were to move things around and change their folder location, so if that hat was in one folder and then I moved it to a different folder, that should update this index to have the new folder path and the ADI would get updated and all that. So I have most of the ADI uh, structure set up. It's all working. I just need to write importers for each of the different types. Um, but yeah, it's coming along pretty nicely. I think that we'll be um, moving forward with being able to drop things into this viewport, move them around with the little handles and all that sort of stuff, um, and creating actual map files that can load inside of the engine itself. Okay. Just before I end this, I do want to show what it looks like when you open that test project. This is the first time I've ever opened it, so I imagine there's some bugs somewhere. Um, but you see there's the VS Code launch and everything. So that means that when you come over here, you should have you know, launch Windows runtime, uh, VK and GL. I haven't tested OpenGL much, so don't rely on that yet. Um, it's been a while. I've been mostly focused on Vulkan. But then you have access to all of these, the source code, so you can directly build your game straight from here and run it. There's nothing to show, so you can't really, uh, running this will do nothing for of interest. Um, but this is where your source code for your game or your project will go, is inside of this SRC source. This is your main entry point, and you would just make all your folders and subfolders here instead of the source. Uh, but yeah. The, this makes it also so that you have access to all the imports of the entire engine and everything uh, set up for you to just start using all the engine code the way you wish for your for your game. Uh, so that's a quick overview. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm open. Feel free to join our Discord, uh, go to GitHub, and uh, join the discussions there or whatever. And yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. See you soon.